Stepping Out with Steam is a production of Blue Ridge Public Television and was brought to you through funds provided by the Norfolk Southern Corporation. locomotives which Norfolk and Weston built in the uh, 40s and early 50s were the finest steam passenger locomotives in the world. Unfortunately, the diesel locomotive was put them out of service because of the fact that the diesel was much more efficient and much more economical to operate. So the uh, reciprocating steam engine as romantic and as attractive as it is, came to its end with the diesel locomotive in the 50s. Well, Norfolk and Weston, after I became president, decided, and I'm being a little facetious here, I guess I decided it because I felt it was a good thing to do, decided that we should revive a steam locomotive for uh, excursion service because of the good publicity and the great interest which was shown in our steam locomotive. When we decided to take the 611 out of the park, I knew from the, from the beginning that I would want to be present for this great event, and I was. I went down and uh, without trying to be obtrusive, I climbed up in the cab while they coupled up to the locomotive and uh, pulled it out of the park. And I must say it was a, a nostalgic and emotional occasion. Uh, it was the first time it moved in uh, almost 20 years, I guess. Uh, I was on board and uh, I was very, very happy. The 611, of course, is of particular interest to me, primarily because uh, of locating the drawings necessary to, for rehabilitation. And uh, secondly, because uh, I lived with it during its 18 years at the museum, probably took thousands of people through the cab to explain the various cab functions and uh, during the uh, remove museum uh, I was also there to make sure that it got out of the museum properly. The Norfolk, and so uh, Norfolk Southern Corporation picked 611 to restore as an example of the latest and finest uh, motive power of the steam age. It was built in 1950 and it represents all the greater advancements in engineering and design for steam locomotives. We had a maximum of uh, 20 men working at one time restoring the locomotive. It took about eight months to the best of my memory. And uh, the last two months getting the engine out, we worked about 14 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. One of the gentlemen uh, that came to help us restore the locomotive was an old uh, retired general foreman from Roanoke Shops, Paul Hausman. His knowledge was wonderful. His uh, ability was wonderful, and Paul helped put the engine together. He really did. He contributed a great deal. Six of was put out of the park in 82. Go to Roanoke Shop and had prepared to go to Birmingham, Alabama. And I went to Birmingham with it. Made me feel real good. I think if people thought enough I was to run up and down the road the way they did. Far. <laughs> People thought that's all the way from Birmingham to Chattanooga. I did the best thing you ever built, I think. The one thing is to be down the road and ride real good. And shake you off easy. And I rode it 85 miles out. Down between Petersburg and Norfolk. It'll do more than that. That's fast enough for me. 
Well, it was quite a thrill to work on the locomotive and help to rebuild it and then finally see it operate on these trips like the one we're on today. It's a feeling of pride and accomplishment in your work. I guess all the men that worked on the engine feel that way. Lots of people that would like to have the job that I've got right now, firing the steam engine. But uh, they see it as a glory job, a lot of glory. You sit up there and you fire and you wave at the people and go by and there's a lot more work to it than just that. As umpteen thing, I hardly have time to look at any scenery. Just for that fact, I have to keep my eyes on about four or five different gauges and the track. Fire is controlled by about five little steam jets that blow coal out all over the firebox. It has a large auger feeds coal from the tender up into the firebox on top of this firing table they call it. We want to have a nice small flat, I mean a nice uh, flat fire. If you have good coal you can usually do that. Sometimes we have our problems though so it, it changes so much from coal to coal. Most of the time I, I primarily have to think about where the water level is in the boiler. That's the main thing. You don't want to ever get any low water. Otherwise you go boom. <laughs> to say the least. We well, usually to start one of these locomotives up from a cold start, we usually fire it up about the day before a trip. And it takes about six or eight hours to get the steam pressure up from zero to 300 pounds. We lay a, fill the boiler up with about an inch of water in the sight glass, and we lay a bed of coal in there, green coal they call it, about three inches deep, throw a bunch of kindled wood on top of it, soak it down with some kerosene or diesel fuel and light it off. But since there's no steam, we hook an airline up to the engine and use it for an artificial draft to make the smoke blow out the stack. And that's about all it is to it. You just let it sit there and percolate until you get up ahead of pressure, and disconnect your air, and you're ready to go. This is the greatest stoker-fired engine in the country, I would say. So I'm real proud to be a part of the Norfolk Southern Steam Locomotive Corporation. I enjoy uh, being an engineer on the 611. I, I feel... Uh, with some lack of modesty, that I'm a pretty good engineer. Maybe not the best. I know I'm not the best. Frank Collins our, 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 is our permanently assigned engineer on the 611, and he is the best. But uh, I come close after that. Uh, seriously, uh, I enjoy uh, the opportunity to be the engineer on any steam engine, particularly the 611. It's a challenge. It is... Uh, a difficult uh, job if done well. My primary concern as any engineer is to be is to run an engine safely, and I really think I do that. Uh, so I, I not only enjoy it, uh, I find it to be a real challenge, and uh, I enjoy watching the people see the 611 as it goes by. Their faces are uh, something to behold. Some of them are. Uh, show ecstasy, some of them show fright, because particularly the young people have never seen a, an animal of this kind that makes this kind of noise. It hisses, it moans and groans. Uh, the sound of the steam coming out of the uh, stack and the cylinders uh, remind, uh, remind you of a dragon, if nothing else, uh, or the way a dragon is supposed to act. Uh, not that the 611 and its sisters are dragons, they're not. They're beautiful girls, from my way I look at them. Uh, but the whole uh, feeling of a steam engine is of a living creature. It, uh, it has characteristics 
which make one think of, of something that's alive. Well, the 611 is, is pretty much of an individual like we are. She's got a personality all her own, and she expects you to treat her a certain way, and she'll react a certain way. It's, uh, that's just the way she's built. And uh, there's things that she doesn't particularly like to have done, and, uh, and she lets you know about it right away. Well, the whistle can make various sounds depending on how you how you pull it. I don't think that I've been a steam engineer long enough to have developed a distinctive style. Some of the old timers who ran the 611 and its and her sisters during their working career probably did have distinctive styles, uh, and they say that people could tell who was the engineer by the sound of the whistle. I, I take that some grain of salt because there's only so much you can do with a whistle. You can pull it uh, in jerks and the sound will be very abrupt. I don't like that. I like to give it a little, uh, a little tone. You give it a little careful pull. But I don't think I'm any uh, different from most of the people who ran the 611. They like to make the whistle talk. It's an experience, it's nostalgia, and that's why people should ride a train. I get asked a lot of questions about, people come to the museum and they say, where's the 611? This is the home of the 611. And with great pride, I tell these visitors that yes, the 611 is a part of our collection, the most significant piece that we have in our collection, but it's in steam excursion operation now. The best thing that could ever happen to the 611 is that it be on the road, in service. It is reaching thousands and thousands, and maybe even millions of people. We've reached about uh, 70 trips a year now, and these are very unique in, in the American uh, uh, situation today. Uh, we are the only outfit that the railroad that runs mainline steam operations, with a few exceptions. The Union Pacific has a couple a year. We go all over the southeast and the Midwest, which is where our lines run, and uh, uh, all the trains are sold out. There's a vast demand, there's a great latent desire, the American people, I, I'm accused of exaggerating, but I like to see them come in great waves, waves of happy people to ride these trains, and that's what's happening. The Bluegrass Railroad Museum plans excursions using the 611 because the 611 is a modern, steam locomotive representing the, the finest of steam power. We have people on this steam excursion from all over the country, as far away as California, New York, and even one from Australia. Our goal is to make one of these operations look like it didn't take anything to do it, although it's far from that, but the passengers really shouldn't have to see the effort because we're trying to do it for their benefit and our own. We get enjoyment out of it. In a way, we are creating a part of history with these trains. The use of a steam locomotive, which is something out of the past, and, and the types of cars that we've preserved give people now an opportunity to do something that many of them never had a chance to do in the years of the steam train and, and just multitudes of passenger trains that across this country. Uh, since 611 has been out, uh, we have provided uh, anywhere from three to five of the cars that travel with its train uh, various places around the eastern U.S.
take a train excursion today, um, you are exposed to uh, lots of um, different kinds of people. A unique aspect of riding trains today is to run into rail fans. Rail fans are train lovers. They are extremist. They, they, will, um, they will paint their cars in the same scheme as their favorite railroad. We have people affiliated with the museum. Uh, one person in, in particular who's painted his van in Norfolk and Western's colors. It's the same scheme as the 611. We have people who have um, license plates that reflect the 611 or NNW or just one aspect of their favorite part of being a rail fan. They wear their hats and they'll cover their whole body, uh, their clothes with um, badges and patches. I'm a rail nut. I'd go anywhere to ride a train. The steam engine is a thing of the past, and if you get a chance to ride behind the steam engine, I think everybody ought to. I'm on this trip because I came on it four years ago, and I've come back every year since. Oh, there's just, there's no words in the dictionary that can explain riding a steam engine. It does something to you that nothing else does. Rail fans really cover all segments of society. It's amazing the number of people that you wouldn't believe. We had two federal judges on yesterday, and you have doctors, physicians, and lawyers, and the common man, and uh, just people, it's there. It's there, all you do is got to spark the interest, and we do it. That lonesome whistle brings them right out of the woodwork, or out of bed, or down from the hills. just like the human body. It's got to be operating up and moving or it'll just rust and die. So the best thing that could happen to the museum and to the 611 is that it stay in operation, reach as many people as possible, and stay finely tuned in a fine, beautiful piece of machinery that it is. Uh, I think our management and the people involved uh, are the, want to see the American people relive uh, the great heritage of the American railroads. Mr. Clayter is a very dedicated, uh, I'll call him a rail buff, he's a rail expert too. He, he's an engineer of great qualifications. He ran the train today, runs it quite often. 
and as long as he is here, we will have steam. Well, the future of the 611 uh, depends on whether or not the company, after I'm gone, and whether the public have an interest in this locomotive and similar locomotives. Right now, the interest is very high, I think, both in our company and in the public. Uh, and the 611 continues to grow large crowds, and uh, we carry more and more people behind the 611 every year, averaging well over 1,000 people a trip. As long as that's the situation, the 611 has a happy and prosperous future. I think the people should uh, ride behind the steam locomotive. It's more relaxing. You see more people. Uh, it's not in a hurry like the Amtrak. Uh, you're, you're from one car to another. You can uh, take a walk through the train, meet other people. You can just have a good time. A uh, locomotive is very infectious thing, and anybody that's ever been around one is usually willing to go back. Um, we, we convinced three people from Belvedere to go with on this trip with us now, and they're all enjoying it. Yeah, I think you're doing a very good job out here, and I think you should really keep it going because it's certainly worth preserving, and it's worth keeping worldwide, and it's, uh, it's a triumph of like the Victorian age of the height of man's engineering from the Industrial Revolution period, and it should be maintained, and as long as it there's the enthusiasm and dedication to keep it running worldwide. More power to it. Go, go, go. It's the most wonderful experience you'll ever have in your life. Wonderful and love to come back again. this train and trains like it as often as you can and as much as you can because they can't be around forever they all wear out after a time so savor it while you can because it's all always a very precious experience Stepping Out with Steam is a production of Blue Ridge Public Television and was brought to you through funds provided by the Norfolk Southern Corporation.